All right, good morning, everybody. It's Brooke with Mrs. Coghill Farm, and I'm squinting because the sun is shining brightly and it's hot. And I'm gonna put my sunglasses on. I've heard a few rumbles of thunder, which I'm not gonna complain about because anything that'll cool off this hot temperature is a plus for me. So today, Dee Dee and me are going to do some modifications to the aviary. And I also got something very, very exciting to show you guys. But first, I've got a little something that I've been waiting to come in, in the mail, that's going to make the aviary a lot cooler. And that is a misting system. So, I'm going to attempt to get that in first before I, I tell you guys what's going on with the birds in the aviary. And um, hopefully I can get this done before... Well, before it rains and literally before I pass out. <laughs> it's just that hot. No, I'm going to I'm going to take it easy. I've got some water with me and y'all come on as we install a misting system and um do a few other things. So, let me tell y'all something. This little dog that I rescued, who I've named Dee Dee, does not miss an opportunity to hop on the side by side for a ride. Dee Dee you ready to go, girl? All right, we're gonna put a misting system in the aviary today. You up for that? Looks like you are. Looks like you're very happy about it. Okay, I hope you can climb a ladder and swing a hammer. Before I get started, I want to show you guys what I've got. Now, I don't, I've never used this before, so I don't know anything about it other than it says it's a misting cooling system and it looks like it's gonna be just what I need. So it just hooks up to the end of a water hose and it's 26 feet in length. The aviary is 28 feet. So I'm gonna let it go all the way across the back part, which is <laughs> exposed to the sun. And um, hopefully it'll give these, these birds some relief on these hot days. And plus they just really like the water. When it rains, they love to take a bath in it. So this will give them a little extra playtime so to speak. Hey Dee Dee, you gonna stay here and wait on me girl or are you coming with me? You look awfully hot. I tried to get you to stay inside but you were not having it. All right I'm gonna grab the ladder. If you want to come help you feel free. So I'm inside the aviary and I wanted to show you guys where I'm talking about putting the misting system and this is the side of the aviary that faces the house. Like I said earlier it's 28 foot long. My misting system is 26 foot so the plan is to put the end that connects to the water hose over here because we do have a faucet right here so it'll be easy to connect it and even hook it to a timer today i'm just going to get it hooked up and make sure it works but hook it to a timer so that we can in turn come out here set a timer and not worry about it here they are the beautiful victorian crowned pigeons and that's not the only birds in here. We have the ringneck doves and the Australian crested dove. If I can get a get my camera to focus on it. She's got that. There she goes. And we did DNA asex these birds to find out that we have two females. So um, yeah, that's okay though. We're we were hoping for a pair, but that didn't happen. And you may wonder why Mary Carl's not out here with me. And um, honestly, she's just to the age. She's 13. She's going to be 14 soon. And she's just to the age where she don't want to be in front of the camera. So we respect that. And this was going to be my project anyway. There's not really anything she can do to help. So um, you just got me today. She, If she decides to make an appearance, good. But I'm not going to force her to do anything that she doesn't want to. So, got my ladder and my sidekick DD down here, and we're gonna get started. Here's what the misting tubing system looks like. It's just got an end on it on this end, and then it goes for quite a ways before the first little brass nozzle where the water will actually come out is located. So I'm going to run this part on the outside of the wire 
so it can be connected to a water hose on the outside of the aviary so no one has to come inside the aviary to turn on the water and my plan is y'all i don't know how this is going to work they gave me some zip ties so i may end up using them but they've also got these little bitty tiny clips and i thought in order for me to hammer these little bitty tiny clips in i needed a little bitty tiny hammer so i just so happen to have that in the house and if i can't get the clips in then i'm going to resort to plan b which is the zip ties but hopefully these clips will work because i think that'll be the best solution to hold the wire onto the wood itself so first clip attempt and hope this goes well bingo so i got the first clip in and i'm thankful for this little bitty hammer because i don't think a big one would have worked and mind you i'm straddling the pond that's in here with the ladder that's why i'm pushed so far back so first one seems to be secure now i can move on down and the rest should be a breeze Y'all hear those doves laughing at me? Just listen. I don't know what's so funny. All right, that was a job, but I got them all nailed up there. And I even got the hose ran to the outside. So now it's just time to go connect the water and see what happens. I did end up using the zip ties. And what I did was I zip tied the nozzles to the position that I wanted the water to squirt out because otherwise they were going backwards, upside down, forward. So I figured why not utilize the zip ties and I used all the clips too. So here we go. So one of my concerns with the system was the amount of pressure. I was concerned that my pressure that comes from my faucet was gonna be too high for the system. And it says that it works best on 50 to 90 PSI. So that's a good thing. All right, I hear water coming through the hose. It's gonna take it a minute. Ooh, I see water. Y'all look. I don't know if y'all can actually see it, but man, this feels great. I think the wind is pushing it back this way, but it's still putting out a lot of, a lot of mist into the aviary. I don't even know if y'all can see it, but I bet you can hear it. Oh, wow. This is going to be phenomenal. So I'm going to go back in here while I tell you guys what I was wanting to tell you earlier. I just came through the door and I'm just going to pan around here. <laughs> Ignore the ladder. But do y'all notice anything? Bingo. Look right there. So, if you remember, a while back, the Victorian crown pigeons were acting like they wanted to build a nest in here. And they were taking sticks, trying to pile them up on a little area right here to make a, a nest, which they already have a nest. But Mary Carl suggested that we get some hardware cloth, which we did, and make them a platform. If this is where they want their nest to be, then we'll let them do it. But they had to have a platform for the nest to be built on, at least I thought. So we went to the trouble of putting all this hardware cloth in. We zip tied it to the strings and everything. When lo and behold, they took the V in the tree with the exception of the little bit of hardware cloth. And this is the part that, that is amazing to me. We had a few things provided for them to make their nest out of. But for the most part, they used their old nest. Y'all, these birds have been deconstructing their nest that they built that we just knew they were gonna lay in. Well, that was not good enough. So here we are. We have a new nest that they are actively working on, actively sitting in, actively, I haven't seen any mating, but showing behavior of wanting to lay an egg and it's august these birds 
sit for 60 days. Just say they laid August the 15th. That's going to be October the 15th when the egg hatches. And obviously they know what they're doing. I'm not going to tear the nest down. But I don't think it's a good idea to have children that will be born. Or a child, I should say. That will be born mid-October. Maybe they're getting ready for next year. But I don't know. They're not telling me anything. I'm just amazed at the fact that they have deconstructed their old nest and started building a new one. I will update on, update you guys on any new activity. But in the meantime, we are in the works to make this aviary look like a jungle. And here's what I mean. Okay, so I don't show the floor of the aviary very much. And we have some missing mulch here. Nobody's place is perfect, I know that. We have some grass that's overgrown around the edges. I don't want to weed eat in here and I dang sure don't want to use poison. So I'm gonna let the grass grow. But we want this to look like a natural environment. We don't want this to be bare ground. We want to have a pathway for us to walk through and a place for the birds to hide and feel like they're in their natural environment. And that's just what we're trying to achieve here. We have some ferns planted already. We have grasses. We have this curly plant that I showed you guys last year. I still don't know what it's called, but it's doing okay. We have, this is what I call a Mexican petunia. I'm not sure of the scientific name, but that's what we call it. This is a dwarf blueberry, more grass, a native azalea. Now, you may say uh, azaleas are poisonous. Well, the birds don't eat these plants. These are simply for their, I guess you could say liking. They like to hide. They like to feel like they are they are not being seen. They like to seem uh, hidden. And that's what these plants are doing. We have this type of grass. I have more ferns over here, but that's not the point. Oh, and also a little fig. It's called a Papa John. And we thought we had lost it last year because our temperatures got down to 14 degrees, which is very, very uncommon here. But it's making its debut. And I think if the temperatures don't get this low next year, then this Papa John will, will do what we want it to do. And that is create branches for perches and ability to get up under it and, and feel the shade. But that leads me to, we've been on a planting spree or shopping, plant shopping spree, I should say, to our favorite nursery. And guess where that is? Petals from the past. So we've got, um, we're, we only purchased heat loving plants. And this is what I call a yellow rose of Texas. There again, that's not the scientific name, but this will get big, bushy and fill in a lot of space. This is a type of lantana as well as this, as well as this. And I believe this one is a lantana as well. Yeah, this is a lantana as well. Then here we have a beauty berry and Mary Carr wanted to plant this in here simply because birds love the berries. This is another one of the Mexican petunias, as I call it. Um, it's, it's the purple variety, but we found something new today, and that is a red variety of the purple petunia you can see here. You can see some of the blooms on the ground that are spent, but they do very well in the, in the hot, heat, dry environments. And this is something that Jason, the owner of Petals from the Past, suggested that we plant for bees to forage on. He said bees love it. And that is African blue basil. It is not a perennial. Um, it does say it's a tender perennial, but probably not for our zone. But that's okay because he said it's easy to take cuttings off of. And it's going to get big and bushy and bees love it. This is something that I kind of desire to have in here. And it's called a Turk's cap. 
and it has a red bloom on it, this variety. It does get big, it gets unruly, it gets bushy, and has that red bloom, which will attract the pollinators and give the birds a place to, to create privacy. I can feel a little of that mist hitting me, and it feels so good. I don't know if y'all can see it in the camera or not, but. So there's a little dove already sitting up here. And look at her, she's enjoying the mist hitting her already. How about that? Everything that we bought to go in here is a heat loving plant. And Jason from Petals advised us that if we'll keep these plants watered for a couple of weeks, they'll be good to go because they're so heat tolerant and they're so sun loving. So um, I wouldn't advise anybody to go out and buy plants right now unless you're buying what we bought, which is drought sun loving plants. He's in there, isn't he? I mean, that's gonna require a little bigger hole, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, good, it's soft. Yay. Where there was mulch, where I'm digging, it's super soft. Is it? Because the moisture's maintained. Oh. baby pigeons roller pigeons and I must say they are beautiful <laughs> glad to get the plants planted glad to get the misting system installed and glad to see that the Victorians have built a new nest I think so I hope y'all enjoyed this video don't forget to like share and subscribe and I'm gonna throw a Jason in there y'all be good